Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of TED Excellence, a rare two-parter on a Saturday. Secondary Saturday. And I come to you live from my Corona Bunker on the moon with Dog Cat Fox, a Pepper Jack, and all of you. Hello, everyone. Welcome again. Here we are. Rock us like a hurricane. Um, yeah. So for those of you that are not in the know, and why wouldn't you be? Uh, on Wednesday, I started doing a TED Excellence. And because of some very poorly timed internet issues, the uh, stream got cut off quite dramatically about uh, 53 minutes into the broadcast. Uh, well, I guess a little bit before that. But either way, uh, I just listened to it for the first time back today. And boy, that roboting was atrocious. Um, so as a consequence, we did not get to finish the stream because at that stage of the game, I couldn't feel uh, confident in my internet connection or that I was seeing people's chats or that anyone was hearing me correctly. And so I cut it off. And that's what brings us to today, where we will pick up effectively where we left off, a little bit of overlap, both to cover any uh, of the cutoff issues and also to refresh ourselves on the uh, sentiments, mentality, rhetoric of our speakers. So that's all his preamble. Also, I'll be using the same bingo card as where it le left off after the first broadcast, and I will recite to you what has been circled so far momentarily. If you don't have a copy of the bingo card from that show, the link is in the description. So get that ready, and I will recite where we left off. But before then, let's say hello to those of you who've decided to join me on this Saturday for this part two, and that would be... Iverson Gatorix, hello. Wade Willison, hello. L. Wolf, hello. No Room for Squares, hello. Jaeger Pony, hello. Check Your Logic, hello. No One Nowhere, hello. Uh, that One Servant of Satania, hello. Havoc Vladimirovich Stalinov, hello. Grillin Pirate Pete, hello. Anakin Plays, hello. Corey Suzuki, hello. Dark Elisle, hello. Hayden Lott, hello. Keeverdam, hello. Mike R, hello. Mr. E, hello. Cyber Grendel, hello. The Gayest Person on YouTube, hello. Tall Person, hello. And then Chat Jumped, because of course it does. Uh, Cress Pierce, hello. Ecto Merck, hello. Uh, gayest person on YouTube, thank you so much. One, please, and one you shall have. X4390246, seven, hello. Absolutely Degenerate, hello. Jordan Herbert, hello. Roger Reynolds, hello. Ever, hello. Cartoon Network, yes or Nickelodeon, no, VSAP, hello. Gunfox61, hello. Begurit, hello. Crimson Tiger, hello. Mike Savage, Blarg. Zeo Gold, hello. Thank you, tall person. Happy National Chocolate Milkshake Day, everybody. Thank you, tall person. God, when was the last time I had a chocolate milkshake? I think it's been too long. I might need to try to find a chocolate milkshake out there somewhere today. Uh, Pinkala Driving Ape Man, hello. Uh, Sean Uli, hello. Thrashy, hello. Sabian 187, hello. Johnny Stoffel, hello. Zal Bleh, hello. Tyler F, hello. And thank you, this is Kyle. Hello, chat people and scribbles. Hello, Kyle. Brittany Holland, hello. The Luke Skywalker, too. Hello. Red Chaos Tree, hello. Eric Grunstadter, hello. Brad Young, hello. No Name, hello. Urkolo De Stefano, hello. Or Urkole? Urkole, is that how you usually say it? Urkole de Stefano. Uh, let's see. Black Belt for Christ, hello. Pink Hall, the Driving Ape Man, thank you so much. FYI, the choppiness is YouTube, not Scribbles. Yes, guys, if there is choppiness, more likely than not, it's not my fault. And I know, given the part one of this, uh, but my internet's been fine all day, and we have experienced both you know, here and collectively as YouTubers some YouTube shenanigans over the last several days. So if there's buffering, if it gets choppy, I wish I could do something about it, but I can't. Hopefully it doesn't translate over into the final uh, rendering of the video for those of you watching in the future, but it is out of my hands. If it gets to the point where you guys can't watch this, then I might unfortunately cut it short again, but you'll have to let me know as we proceed. Uh, the Redneck Ram, thank you so much for the dog cat fox, hiya. And Asian Hippie, hello. Robert Lapine, hello. Perfect Pitch, hello. Your Ridiculous Lunatic, hello. What's his Facebook, what not, hello. Chad Morrison, hello. And with that, guys, I'm going to cut the hellos off there because I could be here all day. And I do appreciate it. It is, a, it is a wonderful problem to have to say hello so many times. So per usual, I'm going to start off with a couple of seconds of the video for you guys to uh, do a sound test. Ah, but for, before that, before I forget, here's what has been circled on the TEDx bingo card so far. 
All right, so here's what has been circled. We already have one bingo. So we're going for more. Uh, attempt to coin new buzzword buzz phrase has been circled. White supremacy, childhood or family anecdote, a list, free space, toxic, make something about race, sex, etc. for no reason, benevolent condescension, plays victim, patriarchy, mind reading or assumes motives, and word salad. All right, so that's what we have so far. Uh, if we get takes credit for something done, experienced by others in their demographic, which I assume we will have by the end of this in aggregate, if not in specific, uh, or we get feminism mentioned explicitly, then we'll have another bingo or two. So we'll find out as we go. But per usual, here's a couple seconds. Tell me if you can hear it. We are starting at 9.35 into the video, at least the, the cut that I made. Uh, and when I say cut that I made, I just took off the music at the beginning and the extensive applause at the end. It's just the middle part. Uh, the actual cutoff when the big roboting happened happened around like 11 minutes and 30 seconds. So we're overlapping by a couple of minutes, but it'll give us a level set. So here we go. Can I read a quote from our Lord and Savior? That would be Audrey Lord. Can I read a quote from our Lord and Savior? That would be Audrey Lord. You guys hear that? Let me know. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Kiefer Dam says it buffered. Now it's back. I had to click live below the video square. Okay. Sounds good, says Kiefer Dam. Sounds good, says Grill and Pirate Pete. I can hear it, says Mike R. All right. So a quote from our Lord and Savior, Audrey Lord, who I found out, thanks to uh, people in the chat, is a poet and a feminist of some kind. Um, <laughs> yes, wasting ourselves, fighting the truths between us. Could you repeat that for me? Yeah. Wasting ourselves, fighting the truths between us. Okay. And I was still, and I am still stumbling over whether the word is truths, T-H, or truce, T-R-U-C-E. Wasting away, fighting the truths between us. I'm going to um, assume it's the truths, T-H, because I guess that's kind of what it sounded like, but either way. And you talk about a lot of times... Um, this kind of holding multiple truths. Okay, yay context clues. It's truths, not truce. But I, I can see how truce and fighting would be an interesting contrast, but whatever. Yes. Um, can you say more about that? Yeah, I think the greatest lesson that I learned um, is that two things can be true at one time. Uh, yeah, yes, it is. Two things can be true at one time. Uh, I think I mentioned this the last time. It's like the sky can be also blue uh, and filled with oxygen. These two things can be true at the same time. That is not, that, that's not some kind of surprise. We need context. Are we going to get it? Probably not. <laughs> it's like the one thing that nobody wants to um, sort of own, but it is so, it's like the, the best thing that ever happened to me. And I say it to myself all the time as a reminder, you know, that, you know. I no, I don't know. You're the one on the stage. You need to tell me. I don't know. I'm very critical of myself. Uh -huh. and I'm sure there are people in the audience who can relate to, to that yes. experience. Mm -hmm. um, and most of us are critical of ourselves, you know, because we've been traumatized or taught to, to be this way. If most of us are critical of ourselves, then why are you talking about it like it's some special thing? I don't know. Oh, wait, wait, you know, um, to survive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that we are constantly battling these truths within us. Right. <sighs> right. You know, right. Okay. Battling these truths. What do you mean? I might be circling gets, uh, leaves out vital context here sooner than I imagine. And, and, and think, you know, thank our, our Lord, <laughs> Lord, <laughs> what? thank you, Lord, Lord, um, <laughs> for, for giving us this great gift of helping us to really see ourselves and others, right, as these complicated uh, pieces. Most of the time when people are fighting or arguing or, you know, on a small level and also when we're talking about much larger levels and even when we're talking about any intersections of oppression, you know, patriarchy, um, well, all of the, you know, the white supremacist capitalist patriarchy, any of those intersections. <sighs> Okay, I probably should have done it back then, but I'm going to do it now. I'm circling leaves out vital context because certainly she is. And because I'm paranoid, chat, give me a message or two to let me know that uh, the stream hasn't died again. 
because I get okay. There we go. Zeo Gold, etc. Okay, thank you guys. I as as things proceed, I may ask that of you once or twice just to make sure because I don't want a repeat of last time if I can help it, which I really can't if it does. But you know, it's one of those things. Okay, so leaves out vital context. Still not another bingo, but we will uh, we'll see what happens. Um, all of those intersections are really there. <laughs> um, because you say so? You know, I also wonder, given that this is technically, at least this couple of minutes or so, is the second time I've done this part of the video, if I'm making the same jokes or comments, because I don't remember, hmm. At the same time. And so none of us are coming in contact, you know, as one part of ourselves, you know, at, at any time, unless we choose to do that. You know, unless we're making a conscious effort because usually because somebody is oppressing us and we're unaware of it to change pieces of who we are. Okay. I think I made this a similar comment earlier. Why would you choose to just be one aspect of yourself if you are a multiple, if you are a multiplicity of identities, you're choosing to be one rather than all of the others. What does that mean? How does that work? You're being oppressed all the time by the invisible hand of fate because of intersectionality and by choosing to go with one identity versus your whole authentic self, then my, my mind is getting trapped. Okay, we're coming up on where the big break happened last time. So, oh boy before we, we enter those spaces. Uh -huh. And so really trying to understand that and navigate you know, myself first and how I'm entering places and spaces. Um, and what does that exist? You know, what is that space between who I am engaging with, whoever it is, um, that may or may be making me think about holding pieces back about who I am? It may or may be, okay. This is gobbledygook. I've, I've got no other word for it. I'm sure there's a more technical term for it. Uh, it's, it's not even sophistry. Like sophistry, you can sort of believe by how it sounds that it makes sense or is intelligible somehow. But this isn't even that. This is just nonsense, double talk, ridiculousness. I, I don't even know what to say about it. It's, it's, it's difficult to comment on because I have absolutely no idea what she is saying. And I've already circled word salad, so I can't circle it again, though, you know, I certainly would if I could. Um, all right. And I, I'm looking at that uh, takes credit for something experienced or done by others in their demographic thing, because I, I, I can't recall if there was a specific incident yet where it was said, but in aggregate, talking about how everybody's oppressed and we all experience trauma and yada, yada, yeah, we're going to get at least one more bingo by the end of this, again, in aggregate, if not in specific. So be prepared. Um, and I think that that's something that everybody can relate to. I can't relate to what I don't understand. You can throw all the buzzwords and all the nonsense at me and think that somehow you are knowledgeable or you're not alone in your way of thinking or whatever else. But no. You're assuming to know what other people think or assuming to live the experiences of other people. Okay, all right, you know what? I just convinced myself because why not? Whether now or at the end of the show. Guys, I have circled, takes credit for something done, experienced by others in their demographic, and you know what that means. <laughs> Ooh, that's a bingo. Right? <laughs> yeah! Bingo number two. We have a double bingo on the board. All right, let me uh, mark that with a line through it so I don't somehow forget that we already uh, claimed that one, let's say. Oh, I can't do that, huh? Why is that? Oh, I see. I have to select the line tool, not the circle tool. I see, okay. And that'll do it. Okay. So, get that back to where I want it to be so I can circle more stuff if I need to. And we'll continue. You know, and I think that we, you know, in this in this country, this is where we are, so we'll speak of, speak of that. 
uh, okay, this country where we are, this is where we are. So we'll speak of that. Tell us about this country. You know, that's something that, you know, we're, we're, we're founded on sort of this, this denial, this very, very great denial. Denial of... And, um, and that when I think of what Audre Lorde said there. No, 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 no. We were founded on a great denial of, of what? That's the denial piece. And that's what's going to not kill me, but it'll kill whoever's denying. So I don't know. <laughs> what? It's going to, it's not going to kill me, but will kill anyone who's denying. What? Okay, the quote you were just gesturing to was, what was it? How do we, why do we fight the truths between us? And that leads to denial will kill you, but it won't kill her? And she's laughing about, okay, well, whatever that means, she's laughing and chuckling about people dying. I, I guess... I don't know what's going on. Um, well, I have a question because you talk about creativity. Uh, and what does creativity have to do with building more compassionate, loving, just world? What does creativity have to do with creating a more compassionate, just, loving world? Well, I'll go out on a limb here. Let's assume for a moment you're living in a unjust, unloving non-compassionate world in order to be the change you want to see you're going to have to be creative in how you be that way against a world that is not that way because presumably the world is that way because of some overwhelming oppressive force that is preventing those things from occurring. And so for you to eke your way through and be that kind of thing you want to see, you're going to have to get creative about how you go about it so you don't get caught or further oppressed. That's, I'm thinking about this far too much. So I think of creativity as the opposite of oppression. Wow! Um, creativity is what gets us curious. And oppression seeks to stomp that space out of us. Wow! I, my brain cannot handle this level of revelation, guys. It just can't. And, 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 and I really want people to take this idea when I'm saying these large words like oppression, et cetera, et cetera. I am talking about you. <laughs> why, why do you need to convince us of this? Besides the fact large words like oppression. How dumb do you think your audience... Well, okay, I, I shouldn't ask that question. It's probably obvious on its face. Um, <clears throat> you're talking about me. You're talking about me. Okay. Golly, I, you know, at least, at least by, you know, extension, uh, I am the audience. I am who you're talking to, and I'm choosing to listen to this. So, uh, golly, I, 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 I thought you were talking to the carpet. I, I suppose you are talking. Okay, well, t okay, well. Now, now that you've, now that you've apologized for using such big words around me, and and just so, just in case I forgot that you're talking about and or to me, because those big words really alienated me from the conversation. Where are you going next? You know, I'm talking about the things that we do together, in moments face to face where we aren't allowing each other to be our whole selves. So please don't, you know, externalize, externalize this, because I think that it is something that sits very deep within all of us, and we all have the capability of doing that. What in Sam Hill is she talking about? How, 
how am I oppressing someone from being their whole self, their authentic self? You need to describe the behavior, okay? And, and maybe somewhere in all of this nonsense, she thinks she's done this, but... And, and maybe I'm forgetting something from the first half of this. But what is it about our, you know, unenlightened, small word selves that we do on a regular basis to oppress another person from being their whole self? What is that behavior? What is that mindset that is so inherent to all of us that none of us are actually being honest with each other or ourselves? What is the mechanism that we must fight against that all of us are doing, except for obviously our, our speaker on the stage, who's practically perfect in every way? And you know what? Here's the other thing. <laughs> I know this might sound a little, uh, a little odd, but uh, not every situation calls for your whole self to be there. I am not the same person at work that I that I am in you know regular life, non-work life. You know why that is? It's called professional distance. It is to say there are some things that are relevant in this situation, and there are many things that are not. If they're not relevant, you don't bring them in because it's unproductive to do so. It's nobody's business at work what's going on in my personal life unless unavoidably my personal life is going to affect my work and my workplace. Otherwise, professional distance. At school, in the classroom, I am not my whole self. I am my restrained self. I'm not being oppressed by the system. I'm being polite and attentive. And if politeness and attentiveness are oppressions, well, I suppose they are self-chosen. But they're not inherently bad. And having a sense of proportion to how much of your whole self you bring to a particular situation or a particular interaction is kind of an expression of, I don't know, self-awareness and maturity. But, uh, okay, may maybe I'm misunderstanding. It's entirely possible. I'm really trying to understand. Um, hurting each other in that way. And that, and that's what makes me think of children, because often when we think of creativity, we think of children, right? Right. Uh, sure, I guess, but not exclusively. I, I don't know. You're, you really are trying to look for validation from everybody in what you're saying. You know, right, you know, right. I, I think our speaker has a, a, a self-confidence problem who gets to be creative, what children get to be creative, what does that look like? What children get to be creative? Okay. Um, and all of the ways that we stomp creativity out of them. Uh, and then- what, what? In all, who are you talking about? I'm not gonna say there aren't assholes out there who are jerks to people and try to, you know, deflate children's inspirations or creativity because they're jerks and can't handle their own or their lack of their own or something. But what do you mean we? You, what world do you think you live in? How do you see other people just passively on the street? I, honestly curious. And we continue to stomp that creativity out every year that we you know, get older and then here we are. Um, and so I think of um, what? allowing people to be creative, which means thinking, which means asking hard questions, which means acknowledging that there's two things that are true at the same time. You, okay, that's the second time you brought up that, I, I don't know, catchphrase or something, and you still have not explained what the heck are you talking about? And also, I need to do something... I need to think in order to allow someone else to be creative. I, I need to ask questions in order to allow someone else to be creative. I mean, I guess if I'm trying to elicit some kind of creative problem solving or brainstorming from someone else, okay, I, I guess, sort of, but 
What's the two things can be true at the same time? What does that mean? Give me an example. Even if it's an abstract example, I'll take that at this point. What does that mean? You know, like I'm black and I'm Brazilian and I'm Latina, right? And that's it. That's it. That is your two things can be true at the same time. I'm black and I'm Latina and I'm resilient. So another set of just listing off arbitrary characteristics of your makeup, whether it be biological or personality traits, which again, none of which inherently say anything about who you are. Well, resilient might encroach on it slightly, whatever you mean by resilient, but that's your two things can be true at once. Who are you trying to convince? Uh, that I, I, I'm both, uh, what was it before earlier on? And I remember this from the last, uh, last episode, the previous episode. Uh, she was saying that she, the, she has all these perspectives, white, black, and Latinx or whatever, because her heritage has those elements in it biologically. And that somehow she can be all three of these things at the same time. If you want to quantify those things as actually having any inherent value simply because they're skin color or, or, or racial origins or something. Okay, what is it? What does it mean to be both black and Latina at the same time? What does that what does that mean to you? I think she tried to explain this earlier on in the in the presentation, but it never really came across to me. What what is that supposed to do? What is the functional benefit of that in your life? I know I'm being rhetorical here, but that's what I would ask. Come on, button go. No, wrong button. Button go. <laughs> and I'm, you know, all of these things and allowing people to come into every space as that um, what? Is, is really what our creativity can allow us to do. What? But if we do not allow or believe that we are creative um, at all, then chances are we're probably stomping that out of others and ourselves as well. All right. Uh, I'm mentally shrugging because at this point, I, I think I might have given up on this making any sense. Maybe I should have done that in the first five minutes, but hope springs eternal unless an uncreative person is stomping that out in me, I guess. Um, I want to, um, as we close out this conversation, oh. offer you something about time. You want to offer her something about time as you close out the conversation. Okay, there's about three minutes left. So this is going to be the grand finale. All right, so you're offering her, offering her something about time. Is it going to be that time is inherently racist? Because I've done that TEDx talk too. You can go look for it. It's, uh, it's fun. Because I'm really fascinated by time and the fact that we live in such small increments in, in relation to the history of the universe, uh, right? which is 13.8 billion years old. Uh, okay. Was that a dig at creationists or something? I assume so. And, you know, it's it? Yeah. Um. Uh -huh. Thank you, the Redneck Ram. I am not creative. I am analytical. That is just a fact of my life, and I have yet to stomp creativity out of anyone else. Thank you very much. Well, you see, Redneck Ram, uh, two things can be true at the same time. You can be both analytical and creative. I believe I'm both analytical and creative. I'm pretty sure I am because I come up with stuff while also analyzing things. So our speaker on that score is at least right. So don't believe you're not creative. I think you can be creative. This is me not stomping out your potential creativity. Draw a picture, write a story, write a poem, uh, do a dance, something. You're creative. I believe in you. And I'm not being facetious when I say that. I really do. So there. This message has been brought to you by Hallmark Cards. <laughs> what? What was that noise? Okay, I'm, I'm backing up slightly. I, what the hell was that noise? You know, it's it. Yeah. Um, <laughs>
<laughs> oh, she was doing the actually or something. So they are making fun of creationists, I guess. All right. Well, whatever floats your boat, I suppose. And um, the Grand Canyon, uh, it took 1.8 billion years to build it or to, for it to be created. To I build it? Uh-oh, Freudian godlike slip. I think I've tried to do too much with my life. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel. I'm just yeah. sitting here thinking about all the things I didn't say. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me, let me say. All the things you didn't say? I'm not sure you left anything unturned as far as things to say. Things that made any sense. That's a different subject. But okay, so because the Grand Canyon took a billion whatever years to form, you feel like you haven't done much in your life. I'm trying to make sense of that, but I just must not be creative enough. I'll tell you about time, because yes. at best, we might have 30,000 days. And I looked at your birthday, which is uh, May 9th, 1984. Yeah. May 9th, 1984? I'm five years older than our main speaker. I was a sophomore in high school. Uh, you currently, as of today, have used 12,993 days. Uh, okay. Well, if that's not uh, pressure, I don't know what is. Yeah. And I currently have used 18,801. Who cares? But More we pressure. can talk about time management, which I'm failing at. <laughs> 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 um, so perhaps you get 30,000 days. How might you lead your life to fully live those 30, the rest of those days? Really? Really? So where do you see yourself in five years or that kind of question? That's, that's where we're going to get some insight from. That really gets into this whole, what was the subject again of this? Interracial relationships are our power. That, that's where this has led us. Okay. And what could be the call to action to this community to do the work, to build a more kind of loving and compassionate, just world that sees multiple truths and sees our complexities? Oh, you know, don't toss her any softballs or anything where she can just say anything and you'll nod and smile and she'll say, you know, right, you know, right. Yeah, what is the call to action? I guess I guess that's all I have to hope for at this point, that we get something that at least I can mildly sink my teeth into. What, what is her suggestion to cure the world of its ills? Jeez, well, that's the biggest question. I agree. It is a big, huge, convoluted question without a wrong answer or even necessarily an intelligible one. So go ahead. Ever. Yeah, ever. That's but, you, but you're living. This is your, <laughs> this is your life. It's the way you show it up. It is my life. life. Um, I think that. Uh-huh. Yeah. The most important thing. Yes. That we can do right now at this moment. Yes. Is to. Yes. Deeply. Yes. Reflect. Uh -huh. you know, think about the person sitting next to you, whether you know them or not. But, but I'm alone. And deeply reflect on how you've kept them safe. What? 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 Uh or how you have not kept them safe. But if I don't know the person... It, oh, Kiever Dam says dog cat fox. Okay, all right, all right. Dog cat fox. Dog cat fox, come here. Come here. Wowie, wow, wow. Okay, all right. So, <clears throat> I mean, this makes more sense because I know you. You're not a stranger, even though she said even strangers count in this. But how have I kept you safe? Well... I built a whole moon base. I mean, I admittedly, I didn't build it for you. Wowie, wow, wow. Yeah, okay. But, I mean, I built a moon base. You stay in my moon base. I feed you. 
uh, you know, you have a place to live, take care of you. That's how I've, you know, kept you safe. Okay. How have I kept you not safe? I mean, I, I make you watch TEDx videos with me. Wowie, wow, wow. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm a terrible person. That's the best I can come up with. But if you were a stranger, if I had absolutely no idea who you were, I'd never seen you before, I just happened to sit down right next to you in the theater, and I'm asked this question, how have I kept you safe? I, I, I have no idea, because the entire extent of my relationship with you, such as it is, is just in this moment, in this theater, sitting down within relative proximity of you. So I guess I've kept you safe by not choosing to physically assault you? I guess. How have I kept you not safe? Um, because I wasn't social distancing or something? I don't know. This doesn't make any sense. Uh, let's see. Oh, everybody's going crazy. Everybody's going crazy because Bluntly Blondie's in the chat. Hi, Blondie. We should have you on the show sometime. What are you doing uh, Tuesday, Tuesday night or Friday night next week? Let me know. Okay, but anyway, how, how have I kept you safe? How have I kept you not safe, stranger who's sitting next to me? I don't know. Tell me. And how you have allowed people like them to live full lives. It's not my responsibility to allow someone to live a full life unless by some cosmic alignment I am in control of their life. And most especially, that question doesn't make any sense if I'm sitting down next to a stranger who I've never met before. So, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, Blondie, I will DM you, and we'll figure it out. That is the call to action. Look to the person beside you. Ask yourself, how have you kept them safe? How have you kept them not safe? And or... How have you prevented them from living a full life? All right. Well, what are your answers to your uh, interviewer there? I'd be curious to know. And what actions have you taken specifically towards that vision? Uh, okay. Well, would you, and she's not going to, but would you, as an example, answer those questions of yourself regarding your interviewer? I mean, she's right next to you. How have you kept her safe? How have you not kept her safe? How have you allowed her to live her full life, etc.? And I, I think that the key to all of this is to not make it about that other person's difference, but to remember that you as an individual belong, and that's why they belong, and that's why we need to all fight for each other and our freedom. You started out this talk by assessing yourself as a list of individual quote-unquote identities. You focused for most of this talk on specifying how complex you are, and yet you don't want people to focus on the differences between each other. But you want everybody to really understand just how different you are, how unique you are, because of all of these identities that you've conjured into existence based on your family legacy or personality traits that somehow constitute an entire identity all by itself. That, that's your concluding thought. You want to relate to each other without focusing on difference while acknowledging every different part of somebody else's makeup, whether you can see it or not or assume it or not. Okay, sure. Why not? and justice in the Woo! world. <laughs> oh. I love you very much. Did I do it? <laughs> well, thank you. And thank let that you. be a call to action. To That's not a call. To uh, that is a call to fraction. That is a call to disassemble people by their component parts and somehow say you know them because of what the things you can see, but also ignoring all the facts that you can see. If the, I did be, I did be the, <laughs> to fully love those near and dear and strange to you. What? Thank you. Near and dear and strange to you indeed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 big hug. Big hug.
Big hug. Oh. Take a bow. Uh, 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 yes, yes. Take a bow. Don't fall over. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Okay. Well. Let me uh, let me update the the bingo card here real quick. There we go. That's those are the bingos we have so far. Let's go over the card. All right, contradicts own point argument. Well, it happened there right at the end, didn't it? It's like you know, ignoring the differences. What? You you just told us that we all had to acknowledge the differences. That's what that's the most important thing coming to terms with all these identities. How do we come as our whole selves and not just a singular identity to try to make ourselves fit into the situation, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Yeah. So uh yeah, there, there's that one. Uh let's see. Marginalized marginalization. <sighs> they never said the words. But for as many times as they talked about race and how that separates people and white supremacy and where they sit in relation to things and so on and so forth, in aggregate, in meaning, I am circling marginalized marginalization. And you know what that means. <laughs> Ooh, that's a bingo. Right? <laughs> yeah! There we go. Bingo number three. Let us continue. Wage gap. Uh, so far as I can tell, they never brought up wage gap in any particular way. So letting it sit there. Self-vilification or wretchedness. Nope. At no point did I hear anything that would undercut their sense of grandeur of themselves. Equity. I think I'm surprised to say I never heard the word used. And again, I'm trying to think back to the part one and everything. Mm, I don't think so. Did they? I don't think so. Weightless example. I don't know that there was any examples given in this. It was all just a bunch of talk. I mean, no examples, no anecdotes of any particular note. Um except for the childhood or family one, talking very briefly about their past and their daughter and that kind of thing. So, no. Uh, microaggressions, unconscious bias. Uh, they talked a lot about unconscious bias, people's assumptions of each other, people's assumptions of her and so on because of the way she is and that kind of deal. So I'm uh, circling unconscious bias. Anecdote that probably never happened. Again, uh, no anecdotes. Not, nothing of any note anyway, so I can't circle that one. Privilege. Hmm. Well, you know, they did talk about advantages and disparities based on skin color and so forth. So I, 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 I think, especially talking about patriarchy and white supremacy and everything else, I'm circling privilege. I've, I've circled it because at least in content, if not in specifics, it was brought up. So guess what that means? <laughs> Ooh, that's a bingo. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, guys. Oh my gosh. Are we about to have one that rivals agents of change? I don't know. Systemic institutional. And again, I'm trying to think back, trying to think back to the first part. in Because at, at this point, we, only, we can only really go in aggregate. Did they ever go to aggregate stuff? They ever talk about something? I think she said systems or something or, or structural. Was it structural? Was that it? Remind me. Was there, did, 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 at some point in the part one, did they say something about structural whatevers that led to this? I think I said something to that effect. If I did remind me and I'll circle that one. It won't get us a bingo, but, uh, and feminism. 
Uh, no, they surprisingly, I mean, they brought up a feminist poet, but that's, that's not enough for me. They had to have at least brought it up or said something that is, you know, very leaning on it. And I know they said patriarchy, but simply bringing up patriarchy does not inherently mean feminism. So I'm not going to circle feminism. Uh, let's see. Uh, James Vaughn Maxwell, they must say structural. It's part of the talking points. I believe she said structural. Uh, Shadow Sonata says several times. Uh, James Michael says, of course she did. Yeah, well, that's that's what I wanted to ask. I wanted to refresh myself because I believe she said structural at some point, but not specifically systemic institutional. And I said I would wait until the end of the presentation before I uh, used that as an extrapolation. So um, let's see. Assassin of the Gray. Uh, oh, he's talking to somebody else. Uh, they hinted at it, but not, but did not bring those two up. Well, that's the thing. I think they said structural, but. Uh, I don't know. And, and like I say, whether I circle or not, it's gonna, not going to change anything as far as bingos go, because I think we're pretty much at the the limit of that. So let me uh, put a line through our latest bingo here just to uh, uh, certify it, let's say. No, come on. You can you can do this. I'm using, uh, I'm using Microsoft Paint, you know, because why go fancy when it's a, a low rent kind of deal. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you know what? Oh, thank you, Ebony Williams. Congrats on adopting the Sheba or dog cat fox. Is is that is that the official name? Of, no, wait, no, no. The official name is dog cat fox. What are you talking about? <laughs> dog cat fox is a specially genetically engineered creature to live with me on the moon. There's there's no other name for dog cat fox, right? Uh, let's see. Sadistic atheist. Do you count the four corners as a bingo as well? No, I don't do four corners. Uh, I want a full on bingo. So that's it. All right. Well, guys, I think that is going to close it out as far as the bingo card. So there's the final, the final tally. Uh, even if I decided to stretch whatever I'm partially remembering from part one into circling systemic institutional, it would not get us a new bingo. You're welcome to circle it yourself if you like. Uh, and thank you, Ebony Williams, again. We are number one. We are number one. Oh, dog cat fox. Uh, but yeah, so one, two, three, count them, four bingos, a quadruple bingo session. And I extended the red line a bit too high on that last one, but oh well. Okay, guys, well, it's not an eight. <laughs> this is the second highest bingo count of a TED Excellence. You were here to witness it in its closing part. Uh, I'll give the next couple of minutes to you guys if you have anything else you'd like to add or say or or uh, mention. And then we'll close this out. Thank you, Mike R., for the bravo dog cat fox. Yay, dog cat fox. Thank you, Mike R. Uh, let's see. So, do, 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 do. Uh, Shadow Sonata, Shiba Inu, clever, intelligent, but a typhoon in a fur coat. That's... That's a nice descriptor of Dog Cat Fox, isn't that Dog Cat Fox? Wowie wow wow. Yes. So Dog Cat Fox Dog Cat Fox approves. Even if even if Dog Cat Fox isn't a Sheba, technically, I, I suppose it's a good descriptor. Uh let's see. Uh, you're ridiculous, Limbic. My God, Tetra Bingo. Yes. Or Quattro Bingo. Quattro Bingo? Whatever. Uh Anal Inn, Scribe Light, what is your cult's name again? Oh, right. The um it was the uh, Temple of Maria Tranquillus. And, I, and my Latin might be wrong, but I still like it. And Maria not being in reference to a woman, but in, again, the understanding I read from a place and a thing that may be incorrect, that uh, a, a C, as an S-E-A, uh, in Latin is called a, a, a mare or a mara or something, M-A-R-E, and that the plural as I understand it, is Maria. And since I'm on the moon and it's been called the Sea of Tranquility, then <clears throat> there are multiple areas of the moon. So the Temple of Tranquil Seas is basically what I what I call it. So there you go. That's that's my that's my interpretation. Even if it's incorrect in the Latin, it's correct for my head canon. So there you go. Uh, let's see, James O. Maxwell, uh, Mare or Mar, yes, Maria. Okay, good. Yeah, so temple, the temple of Maria Tranquillus. 
Uh, let's see. Ercolo De Stefano, why do people worship Macintosh? Oh, Peggy Macintosh? Um, well, she wrote the uh, Invisible Knapsack essay or book or whatever you want to call it, uh, where she she was one of the first people to sort of detail the the the, the pillars of what constitutes white privilege. Uh, so she is the sort of like um, uh, Crenshaw when we looked at uh, intersectionality a few episodes back. She was the first person to sort of articulate the concept of white privilege, and so she is credited. And I guess appropriately enough with being the person who invented it. Um, in fact, I have a Peggy McIntosh TED Excellence, or TEDx, I should say. I haven't actually done a TED Excellence yet, uh, that I'm sort of holding in reserve for a special occasion. I haven't watched it ever, but it is Peggy McIntosh, the Peggy McIntosh. So um, at some point down the line, maybe I'll do that one. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I have notions about what I might do with that, but we'll see. Uh, let's see. James O. Maxwell, the seas of peace. You'll find all kinds of oceans and stuff on the moon. No question. Yes. Uh, Anilin says, Maria Tranquilla. Tranquilla. Well, okay. I used Google Translate to find what tranquility was in Latin. So it said Tranquilla. So I'm going with that. What do I? Uh, let's see. Anything else? Uh, laughter is deadly. How many more of these insane talks can there possibly be? Oh, oh, laughter is deadly. Oh, oh, oh. I I wish I could live in the world of naivete that you live in. Or maybe maybe forced naivete. Um, they are endless. Seriously, if you go to the TEDx YouTube channel, just, just look at the number of uploads <clears throat> to that channel. And dollars to donuts. 80% of them are probably nonsense that either are as crazy as this one or hedge somewhere just above. It depends. There are good TEDx talks. Don't get me wrong. I have seen interesting TEDx talks that did not make me want to like pull my brain out of my head and give it a good wash. Um, but a lot of them are or are just on inane subjects or really silly things. So... Uh, Assassin the Gray, Scribelite, if I provide all means of living and safety for another person, not family, then that person is not free. I own them, and that is tyranny of the individual. That is an interesting interpretation. Hmm. That is interesting. Yeah. It, it, what, you know, I, I, am I my brother's keeper? That kind of thing, right? And if I am a keeper, are they free? Yeah. Good point. Uh, let's see. Uh, Laughter is deadly. Scribe light. Have you ever thought about making your own TEDx talk masquerading as them, but trolling at the same time? Well, it's funny you should say that because I did make up my own TEDx talk. It's a fake TEDx talk. Uh, it's on my channel. Uh, if you do click on the little magnifying glass and search for uh, uh, red circle carpet talk, I think it is, or just look up the uh, the phrase malicious tranquility. Uh, I made up my own TEDx talk, uh, but a, a good a good thing was brought up uh, on the Kurt Metzger show. I think it was him. Uh, he brought up, or someone maybe it was one of the viewers. I forget. But anyway, as a result of that, someone brought up the fact that uh, Sam Hyde, who is a well known comedian and sometimes suspect in horrible things, uh, d actually did that. He did a stealth TEDx talk where he went in and did something fake, and the fact that he got on the stage and everything, and uh, it actually, I, I don't know. I don't think it changed anything. Uh, sneaking in to do a TEDx talk kind of gives it its own legitimacy in a way. And it doesn't or shouldn't. So, uh, no. I mean, the notion has crossed my mind, of course, and many people suggested it. Uh, but uh, just to try to punk a bunch of people into believing some nonsense I come up with, eh, I don't know that that would prove a point. I'd rather actually just listen to people who are or who I at least believe are earnest in their presentations, uh, rather than know that somebody went up there doing something fake. So uh, even if it's me knowing it, so. Um, and besides which, it would take a lot of effort and work and I'd have to like expose my identity and everything and go through a whole bunch of rigmarole. And if they looked me up somehow, it all fall apart. And yeah, so I think the fake one I cooked up on my channel is 
is enough. I, I started writing a second one. I haven't finished it yet. Maybe I'll do it someday. Uh, let's see. Check your logic. It says four bingos. Yes, we had four bingos. Uh, combined with part one and part two, four bingos. So two each. And there you go. Uh, let's see. And I think that's where I'm going to call it, guys. Uh, we'll call it a just, just under an hour like the first one. So uh, anybody listening to these in, uh, in order uh, won't be around having to listen to this nonsense for too long. But with that, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, if you would like to hear more from me or The Ranting Monkey or Satsu Two Cents, you can find all three of us tonight on The Ranting Monkey's channel at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern for The Lords of the Night, where we will talk about the news of the day, news stories that you send to us, what we've been up to on the internet, and then your comments and questions. Um, tomorrow, Sunday, I may do something. It won't be a TED Excellence, but I may do something. Uh, off the uh, beaten path, as it were, as I've sort of reserved Sundays to do. If I decide to do so, I will certainly post about it early on in the morning on Sunday. So if you're not already following me on Twitter, I advise that you do so, so you can find out when and where things will happen. Uh, but beyond that, guys, uh, I hope you are all having a good Saturday. I hope you all have a good weekend. I hope you are all safe and well. If you're not well, please get well soon, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.